Hello, Darshan Maharaja here. I saw this article in today's uh, Financial Post uh, about Immigration Minister Mark Miller musing as to whether the immigration targets uh, should be reduced or not. And uh, of course, this is a 180 degree <laughs> turn from the previous approach that they have taken. And to be fair, this uh, has been the case for all the 20 plus years that I have been in Canada. The accepted um, wisdom being that the only way immigration targets could go was up. Now, the report says that uh, Immigration Minister Mark Miller says he is exploring the rare option of reducing the number of permanent residents allowed in each year as he gets set to announce the annual immigration targets in November. He is also quoted as saying that uh, certainly there is a world where we could reduce immigration targets. It's amazing what uh, being 20 points behind your competitor does to one's ideals because until uh, recently, Minister Miller was... Uh, insinuating that anyone complaining about all the problems that have been caused by excessive immigration was uh, targeting immigrants. And of course, that wasn't the case. We were talking about what is a healthy level of uh, immigration versus what is not. But this was a standard tactic and it was kind of a stalemate because they wouldn't budge. It was like watching uh, some kind of a video game or maybe the movie Matrix where, you know, neither side wins and the stalemate continues and the battle continues. So that was the kind of situation which has been broken now, but unfortunately uh, not because of uh, the right reasons. Uh, it's because it's, you know, politically now becoming untenable for them to have the kind of immigration policy that they have been following and especially since uh, spring 2022 and I keep uh, coming back to this motion uh, M44 which threw open uh, permanent residency pathways to uh, workers of all skill levels as opposed to the uh, high skilled uh, immigrants that we used to target for almost 40 years by that time. And uh, now I, I want to talk about, uh, you know, how this impacts on the conservatives as well, uh, because uh, there is uh, a lot of room that will be created by the time the election is held for the conservative government to do a cleanup job on uh, all the excesses that have been allowed or maybe they were intended in the immigration policy. Uh, Again, I'm sorry I'm repeating myself, but in July last year, uh, I had asked this question to uh, conservative leader Pierre Poilier as to whether he would uh, be willing to look at reducing the numbers for immigrants as a part of his effort to deal with the housing crisis. And I posted that video. A lot of people uh, were not happy with, uh, with his answer. And I kept saying and have kept saying uh, since then that uh, you don't want him to go a whole hog and, uh, and then you know spend his resources, time and energy uh, in uh, dealing with the uh, reaction to what he says. He has to be very measured and he has been measured. For once, I am uh, impressed by the strategic sense of a politician. Uh, where he has at every stage said exactly what it was possible to say within the political climate. And as that political climate has evolved, so has his uh, stance on this. That is, maybe his stance was already there, but his expression of it has uh, kept pace with the uh, political climate and public opinion. And uh, even... Uh, Last month, when I asked him about uh, immigration, his uh, answer was a lot better than what it was in July last year. But uh, there was still room for improvement and I knew that he was going to wait for all the circumstances to be in place um, for him to enunciate his full range of ideas on immigration. Now, it looks like uh, political compulsions will force 
the liberals to create that ground for him. And uh, therefore, there will be a broad kind of agreement by the time Pierre Polyev becomes prime minister. And I'm assuming that he will, given the lead that the conservatives have, the latest uh, poll that I saw, put them at 238 seats. So barring very, very unusual circumstances, we are looking at a, a conservative government after the next election, whenever it happens. And by that time, the uh, entire ground will have been created for him uh, by the liberals to take all the corrective measures. And there will be a broad agreement, uh, you know, on one end uh, of the stratum, there will be people who have always been vocal about this uh, excessive immigration. And at the other end of the extreme, you will have people who have grudgingly accepted <laughs> that this is now what uh, the party that they support, be it uh, liberals or any other party, they have also come around to the same conclusion. So they have no option other than to acquiesce with it. So it's no longer racist to say that immigration needs to be reduced. Even uh, Minister Miller has been going about this in stages, but I think it's not because of any uh, strategic plan, but rather in response to uh, events or developments or issues uh, as they occur. So initially he talked about uh, reducing the number of uh, international students this may feel like it was a long time ago, but it was only in January. And then uh, he uh, amended the rules around the work permits, including uh, spousal open work permits, etc. And finally, he has arrived at the, the holy grail of immigration, which is permanent immigrants. So if he is thinking about reducing that number from 500,000, we don't know how far he'll go. It is possible that his statement is only meant as a trial balloon to see what kind of response it gets from the public and especially from uh, the important <laughs> constituencies uh, on whose support the liberals depend. So it could be a trial balloon, but even if it is, now the discussion is possible. It's no longer a racist thing to say or for people like me you know, who get accused of wanting to pull up the ladder behind us. <laughs> Those accusations hopefully will now disappear and we can finally have a mature discussion about what level of immigration is good for Canada and for the immigrants as well. Because I don't like the idea of people coming here and then uh, you know, living a life of drudgery, starting out with 20 people in one basement and then uh, rents being where they are, uh, never even uh, having a possibility of having an independent <laughs> rented apartment of their own. So that's not the kind of life that I want newcomers to live. Hopefully now we can have a mature discussion about this and uh, arrive at a reasonable level of uh, uh, immigration, which will be more difficult uh, than you know, this entire debate has been so far because once people on different sides agree that immigration needs to be lower, then it's going to become more heated as to who gets, uh, you know, the spoils because ultimately we are mooching off a lot of these people, whether they come with money or they don't. And then uh, they just work for uh, minimum wages or less than minimum wages. So, you know, though all those constituencies will then be fighting for the uh, allotment of a quota uh, from a diminished pool. So it's going to be more intense. And uh, I'm uh, curious to see what uh, Pierre Polyev will have to say about this. And if he doesn't say it by the time I have met him the next time, rest assured, I'll ask him. Until we meet the next time, goodbye and be well.